Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. So a couple interesting things we wanted to go over here, guys. You know, it was in the news. The U.S. was just testing some new space base weapon that would be able to supposedly take out whatever China and Russia are doing up there as, you know, warfare in space and perhaps even nuclear warfare in space is something that's being talked of. Here you have a retired U.S. Air Force Colonel Diedrichsen. Several nuclear weapons sent in the space were destroyed by extraterrestrial beings. You have a lot of disclosure that's out there that some people have chosen to just, you know, ignore. But it's there. And if we delve deeper, we can see how clearly uh, this reality that we are in right now well, we're in the apocalypse. It's being unveiled. It's always been there. It's just been distorted and twisted and turned like Lot's wife. This pillar of salt, right? This formation is taken to literally be Lot's wife. You know that story. Sodom and Gomorrah, God's going to kill the sinners, etc. Well, you know, it's it's right there in, in the Bible. This is the names of God uh, version so it distinguishes it just doesn't say lord and god it, it gets into specifics and so it speaks about yahweh and it speaks about as we were talking about in an earlier video how people have entertained angels unaware because they look just like normal human beings and again it's it's a distortion because yes there are angels angels are beings that are in service to others that are of a non-3D physical nature. So there are angels. But then there's also extraterrestrials that can literally copulate with physical human beings and create, you know, hybrids and offspring. And this this is stuff that's known in in the Hindu scriptures. It's just straight out there. It's understood what's going on. It's only distorted, really, uh, in, in the mainstream fundamentalist point of view. So these, uh, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah, we're living in those times, are we not? It's really, truly disgusting. So two angels come to Sodom in the evening as Lot was sitting in the gateway. When Lot saw them, he got up to meet them and bowed with his face touching the ground. He said, please, gentlemen, why don't you come to my home and spend the night? You can wash your feet here. Uh, and then tomorrow morning you continue on your journey. Very, very nice, congenial, friendly. You know, it, it, it's just what people would do in, in those days. And, and still out in the countryside, you, you do encounter, you know, that type of hospitality. Uh, and you, you may in the cities as well. But what comes out is that, you know, you got to leave Sodom because there's cities that are going to be destroyed. And the men uh, asked Lot, do you have anyone else here? Any in-laws, sons, daughters, any other relatives in the city? Get them out of here because we're going to destroy this place. Wait a minute. We're going to destroy this place? So these are non-physical angels? No, these are physical beings. And, you know, th these are beings with a lot of technology and firepower. We're going to destroy this place. This is like military guys coming in. Get them out of here. The complaints to Yahweh against its people are so loud that Yahweh has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out, spoke to the men, engaged to his daughters. He said, hurry, let's get out of this place because Yahweh's going to destroy the city. But they thought he was joking. As soon as it was dawn, the angels urged Lot by saying, quick, take your wife and your two daughters who are here. Or you're going to be swept away when the city is punished. When he hesitated, the men grabbed him, his wife, and his two daughters by their hands. Now, if they're angels, non-physical beings, how are they grabbing them by their hands? Yeah, it's pretty obvious. Uh, because Yahweh wanted to spare a lot. They brought, they brought them safely outside the city. As soon as they were outside, one of the angels said, Run for your lives. Don't look behind you. Don't stop on the plane. Run for the hills or you'll be swept away. 
Lot answered, oh no, even though you've been so good to me and even though you've been so very kind to me by save my life, I can't run as far as the hills. This disaster will overtake me and I'll die. Look, there's a city near enough to flee to and it's small. Why don't you let me run there? Isn't it small? Then my life will be saved. The angel said to him, all right, I will grant you this request too. I will not destroy the city you're talking about. Run there quickly because I can't do anything until you get there. The city's name is Zor. The sun had just risen over the land as Lot came to Zor. Then Yahweh made burning sulfur and fire rain out of heaven on Sodom and Gomorrah. He destroyed those cities, the whole plain, and those that lived in the cities and whatever grew on the ground. Lot's wife looked back and turned into a column of salt. Early the next morning, Abraham came out to the place where he had stood in front of Yahweh. And when he had looked to Sodom and Gomorrah and all the land in the plain, he saw smoke rising from the land like the thick smoke of a furnace. When Elohim, when the Elohim destroyed the mighty ones, those that judge humanity, destroyed the cities on the plain, the Elohim remembered Abraham. Lot was allowed to escape from the destruction that came to the cities where he was living. Uh Aha. You know, this story is echoed again in the Hindu scriptures. um, And it talks in a different sense because these are wars of the Asuras who are demonic uh, beings in the sense that they are only in service to themselves. When the Asuras come to town, they outright take you over. Uh, They have palaces created for them. They have temples created for them. They demand worship. Uh, They demand the best of everything. They want the best wine, the best food, the best uh, physical, you know, pleasure, etc. This is, you know, again, uh, a lot of your um, virgin sacrifices, so to speak, is really going to them. Um, So, you know, the Asuras, negative entities, totally in service to themselves, And they're in this war against the devas. Now, the devas are beings that support the natural order. When a deva was in town, so to speak, um, you would find them guiding, teaching, enlightening, helping humans in a positive manner. And not asking them to get down on their knees and, and, and worship and demanding the best from Uh, humans of everything not taking them over so it's interesting that there are these battles that go on between the devas and the asuras that humans witnessed and in some of these whole cities were destroyed now in that lot story it was talking about sodom gomorrah and going to be a third story well this story is is basically talking about three cities there you go It's the same sort of story. And the Asuras uh, are in these battles against the beings that help humans. Now, the Kali Yuga started traditionally when Krishna left. And again, Krishna we view as more of an extraterrestrial than, than literally an incarnation of Vishnu, the preserver. Um... So when we start looking at it as an extraterrestrial affair, it really makes a lot of sense. But, you know, these are, again, whole cities destroyed by weapons that are kind of incomprehensible. And in reality, um, Brahma, interestingly enough, is is not worshipped. And Brahma, Abraham, hmm. There's a, a definitive connection right there, as, as the story of Abraham is clearly taken from Brahma. And Sarasvati, the goddess of wisdom, is thought to be the counterpart, the female counterpart to uh, the male Brahma. And Sarasvati, Sarai, and Abram, Abraham and Sarah. This, this is where they, they take these you know, stories from. And even Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, again, is, is a story that's given in a different light. It's told by the, the winning story, who in 
the Hindu tradition, unfortunately, when you're going into a Kali Yuga, it's the Asuras that get the upper hand as the frequencies on earth plummet and the devas can no longer manifest in the physical sense here on planet earth. Um, and it's given to Shiva that Shiva is actually the one, as you see here, this depiction right here is telling that story of Shida, Shiva shooting an arrow which ends up destroying uh, these cities on a cataclysmic scale of technology again. Shiva is the destroyer uh, of the three, the original trinity, so to speak, in that concept of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. Again, creator, preserver, and destroyer. And then there was this, which is just fascinating as well. Mm -hmm. Well, this was curious you know um going through it i i found that very unique and you know you you have what looks to me like a being that was frozen in time and i i found his demeanor and the, his position most curious and when i read into that i, I saw a uh, energy these people were like thinking it was some type of a sort of a god or or something they they were bowing to it they were worshiping it but it was also a sudden this energy came upon suddenly now the energy that showed itself is of a alien technology type of a nature so it was not a god but they didn't know what it was, so the automatic thing to do would be to bow to it. And this is what it did to them. Now, I feel a lot of fear on both sides of it. The, the entity that did this, and of course, these guys who are, who are worshipping down to it. It's really quite disturbing, the energy that I feel that comes, that, that's coming away from it. Um, and I, I think, you know, these are your stories in the Bible. These things really, truly happened how the Bible says. Now, I've never found a, a story in the Bible that's not in the Vedas. I mean, the, all the stories in the Bible are, are taken. They're <laughs> plagiarized. They're used. They're recycled. The Bible is an absolutely nothing original. Nothing, 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 nothing. But the stories in it are real. It's just they rehash them and they from just a from a different perspective and then they put them in front of uh the west western people so that they turn around and also worship it to create kind of a control grid so um if you don't believe this you know if you don't believe this book that's in front of you you're going to be in big big trouble mister is basically what what they teach but yeah this these things are very real the stories in the bible are real it's just quite disturbing how how this thing happened the the stone people that we're looking at here um very disturbing moment in time yeah and this is the wreckage it appears to be the wreckage of a ship you can see um, barrels casks you can see all sorts of stuff and it does appear somebody dressed um you know in old time garb or maybe islamic garb to a degree bowing down in a worshiping type of position and frozen, you know, just like Lot's wife. So I just wanted to share this with you guys as, again, it's just amazing what's in the Hindu scriptures because it speaks clearly of extraterrestrial interdimensional warfare. And as I've gone deeper and deeper, because there's so many of them, uh, literally, you know, so many scriptures, thousands tens of thousands of, of times uh, the amount of material than the biblical material and it's just overwhelming how clear the message is this has always been extraterrestrial uh, in nature and interdimensional so as always guys much love look forward to your comments this by the way is in indonesia i'll put all the links source bless and namaste namaste